I really need to do more research before investing in hobbies. I thought it might be fun to get into bowling, so I spent all my savings plus $1.22 on a Brunswick. But then I started actually reading the rules, and it turns out there's actually a lot of other bowling prerequisites that you'd never think of. What the hell, you need pins? Luckily I already had a few spare of those lying around, but still, I was not adequately prepared going into this. There should have been legislation in place to protect me. To catch myself up to bowling speed quicker, I conducted a quick search through my rows of poor decisions for Brunswick branded video games, and I didn't return empty handed. I returned full handed. Three worth of full to be exact. I'll be trying this handful in chronological order, so we can compare a few snapshots of Brunswick at different points in time and glean some experience that's certain to come in handy for real bowling. Starting off strong with Brunswick World Tournament of Champions, published by THQ for the Super Nintendo in 1997. This is where it all began, the very first bowling game with enough leftover budget to afford a Brunswick licensing deal. It's likely a little out of date, being a quarter century old and all, but it's important to be aware of the history of the bowling culture I'll be inserting myself into. What is a Brunswick anyway? Bowling means Brunswick! Every guy and gal should know the name! I'm immune. They're a general all-purpose thing-making corporation that produces a multiplicity of products, including but not limited to bowling and bowling paraphernalia. Their most notable achievement occurred all the way back in their glory days of 1911, before depression had been invented, when they were the first company to popularize normal bowling balls instead of wooden ones. <sighs> Hear me out, fellas. Maybe we shouldn't make them out of splinters. They were proud of this innovation, too, going as far as conducting an advertising tour for the new Mineralite Ball, so they brought them and showed them off at YMCA's around the country, which made all those Brunswick executives just look like laughingstocks once people realized this new material had less than ideal friction with bowling alley floors like 70 years later. This dead guy couldn't catch a break. At least... That first part probably happened. The only other mentions of these historical details I found during my brief armchair research are just some random blog posts, which are all just paraphrasing the same BowlingBall.com article from 2000... something, I don't know, it isn't timestamped, but the goofy comment section argument dated to at least 522 weeks ago. The guy who wrote the article was a professional bowler who created a ton of educational bowling videos and articles, which lends what he says a non zero level of credibility. And he also died last year, so I'll be polite and take the man for his word. Back to the game. While you can just jump right into the bowling with default settings via practice mode, you'd be remiss to ignore the first menu option, which allows you to customize your avatar and view some encyclopedic stats about miscellaneous bowling pros. This is great! I've been literally dying to know how much money Walter Ray Williams Jr. made from tournaments up to 1997. Huh, nothing's changed. Maybe I've really just been dying from that open wound on my chest. The Avatar creator has lots of customization options, far more than was the norm for SNES era titles. You can change your shirt, pants, shoes, what type of bowling ball you like, even whether you're left-handed or right-handed. But for all those specific options, there are some glaring omissions, as well as some merely squinting ones. But before you get all up in arms over this and decide to give a piece of your mind to whoever works at the now defunct THQ HQ, you've gotta remember, this game is a product of its time, it would be unfair to view it through a modern lens. Females wouldn't figure out how to work a bowling ball for another decade, and considering the hardware limitations of the first millennium, this is probably as close to me as you're going to get on a game from 1997. Next is the gameplay, which includes what seems to be 16 digitized live-action footage, an inclusion that reaches novelty levels of interesting to see on the Super Nintendo. I'd imagine these flashy visuals take up a lot of storage space, emphasis on imagine, don't ever look at me like I know what I'm talking about, so I guess it makes sense that they wouldn't have room for less important demographics like women. Predating the gaming industry's motion control revolution, the bowling throws here are determined by a sequence of two timed button presses. At first I assumed you wanted to max these out like a carnival high striker, but whenever I think I figured out what spots in the meters I'm supposed to be aiming for, I just shoot another ball into the gutter. It's confusing. There's probably an explanation for how to do things properly included in the game's manual, but taking into account the information that would have been available to players at the time at the expense of making a game look less comedically unplayable? Pfft. One major issue with this game, though, is that it doesn't have a pause feature. Come on, I want to not throw the ball later. It's also worth noting that despite this ball I selected being listed as a good spare ball, I didn't get even a single spare during the hour I played. Now, call me a pedant, but I consider that a bad spare ball. Zero stars. Flicker forwards a decennial later, and the world erupted into applause at the first sight of Brunswick Pro Bowling for the Xbox 60. Well, that's the version I had, but it was actually a cross-platform game. In fact, it crossed so many platforms it has a Wikipedia info box row longer than the list of cities I've been to in my life. It even had mobile ports on iOS and Android, which like 99% of other old mobile games are now lost media. No! Instead of a controller, this release really utilizes the Kinect, my favorite piece of physical CIA spyware. Riddle me this, is there any possible justified explanation for why they require you to connect your Xbox to the internet instead of the camera? Oh, it needs to install drivers that weren't included in the original Xbox 360 because they didn't design it with this peripheral in mind. Fucking sheep. But it's all worth it, because at the reasonable discount cost of 
choppy motion tracking and the illusion of your privacy, you can witness what it would be like to have several anxiety episodes in a bowling alley simultaneously. It's like I'm really there. In fairness, although the motion tracking doesn't work smoothly for me, it might just be because I don't have enough distance between myself and the Kinect. I tried to compare it to the official Xbox bowling game on Microsoft's own Kinect Sports to see if there was a difference in performance, but it won't let me play that one at all due to the lack of space. In a way, you've got to appreciate that about Brunswick Pro Bowling. Instead of just refusing to let you play the game you paid for if you don't have an ideal amount of room, it lets you enjoy the compromised, jerky playing experience you're entitled to. Crave Entertainment is like the cruel relative that lets you smoke cigarettes at 12. Well, Microsoft is that bitchy height requirement enforcing theme park employee who won't just let you fucking die already. Brunswick Pro Bowling for Xbox 360.flv on the official Brunswick YouTube channel, hosted by Sean, gives us a better picture as to what the game is actually supposed to look like. Alright, here we are, right in front of the TV, in front of the Xbox 360 Kinect. Oh boy, a live demonstration! I was worried it was just going to be a professional bowler with a sponsorship contract reciting a script against a green screen without a sync gameplay footage added in post. Here we go. Not bad. Woo! Did you see that? What was the game actually like? It's a bowling game. Featuring cartoon animations when you perform well that I couldn't get to appear myself. I feel like they missed out by not using the Kinect's camera to actually insert yourself into the game the way a lot of other titles did, which is where I feel like this peripheral was at its best. If you're gonna do this whole you're in the game gimmick, you might as well go all the way. Instead, they have a selection of 12 selectable prototypical human avatars, named Rookie 1 through 12 respectively until you rename them to reflect yourself. Considering the hardware limitations of the second millennium, this is probably as close to me as you're gonna get on a game from 2007. But still, given the number of people in the world, it's not a great system. But the bowling game avatar creation industry really stepped up their game in 2010 with Brunswick's own cosmic bowling on the Wii. The avatar creator here lets you customize these potato head egg things, which are a lot more my speed, because instead of excluding certain groups of people from avatars that actually represent them, it excludes everybody. I mean, really, would anyone choose a human body to represent themselves if they had the choice? Uh, forget I asked. Gameplay-wise, Cosmic Bowling isn't too much different from any other bowling game. The gimmick here is that there are two modes, as per the title. Bowling and Cosmic, the latter of which is simply the former in a space setting. On its face, this release might not seem like much, but in 2010? Cosmic Bowling. Brunswick Zone Cosmic Bowling! That tweet is from before the month the game even came out. I think I found this game's single pre-orderer. There's also a multiplayer mode where you can have a bracket tournament together with your friends, or more realistically if you find yourself playing 12-year-old Wii Shopware alone against computer players. Here we have the most anticipated bowling face-off of all time. Emilia versus the improperly spelled little E there where the I should be Emilia. I was hoping for a dramatic showdown to prove the correct spelling once and for all, but she lost too early in the bracket for us to have answers. Oh well. Also, real quick, shout out to Godlike Sebek of being credited as a playtester in Brunswick's own cosmic bowling fame. I aspire to have the positive self-image slash narcissism, depending on who you ask, requisite for a nickname of that caliber. Adderall, these games really painted a clearer picture of bowling than the blurry one I previously had hung up in my mental wall until this point. I just wish they provided me with an opportunity to accomplish what I set out to do in the beginning. Go bowling for real. Hold on, what's this? Coupon inside for bowling at any Brunswick Zone $20 value? What a fortunate stroke of luck. I could put everything I've learned into practice and experience bowling 10 years ago firsthand. Only issue, during the aforementioned 10 years, all of the Brunswick Zone centers have been rebranded into Boleros due to the company's withdrawal from the bowling industry in 2014. A tidbit which I neglected to mention until now because I'm a pathological liar by omission. On that note, this particular location was never Brunswick Zone to begin with, but perhaps the Brunswick dream lives on. They told me to kill myself.